So Mary, can you tell us what the most memorable conversation or interaction you had with your fellow assembly member was? Yeah, of course. Um, actually, I remember when we were discussing the climate change scenarios and how we can could limit warming uh, to uh, 1.5 Celsius. So the deliberation motivate us to come up with solutions uh, and reach uh, to reach scenario number one. Uh, I remember that I spent uh, all night uh, thinking of uh, how we can get this uh, uh, scenario, how we can limit uh, the warming. Uh, so uh, after this uh, deliberation, um, I I felt like I feel like we are uh, become uh, more close to each other uh, and friends, and um, we are get like more flexible to accept others' perspectives. Thank you so much, Mary. I think it's always brilliant to hear how sort of these strangers from all walks of life are connecting not only at a personal level, but really engaging in teamwork to come up with solutions to some of the most pressing problems of the world. Now, as a product of all of these interactions, conversations, ice breaking, uh, you and the other assembly members co-created the People's Declaration on the Sustainable Future of Planet Earth and presented it at COP26 as your message to world leaders, but also to the wider global public. I want to ask you first, which clause or section in the People's Declaration resonates with you the most and why? And I'll invite Jalu to share first, please, Ja. Uh Bureau 比如说开发新能源的工作的。I will share this clause. We appreciate that the energy transition will have huge implications for livelihoods, such as jobs transformations. Therefore, there must be a gradual energy transition to allow for a shift to new career paths. And Jia shares, uh, shares with us, she thinks that while implementing climate action, we cannot ignore those jobs get affected by it. For example, coal miners if we want to implement this agreement, we'll definitely threaten or affect their jobs. So it is important for us to think about career paths for this group of people in advance so we can help and assist them in new careers, such as developing new energy. Thank you so much, Ja. Mary, I'll ask you to share too. Which clause in the People's Declaration resonates with you the most? And can you tell us a little bit about why? OK. Uh, actions on the climate crisis must be participatory, enabling people at all levels to contribute to, to decisions on a climate, particularly a group from countries least historically uh, responsible for and most affected by the climate crisis. I have chosen this clause because I do believe in inclusive dialogue. Climate change is a humanitarian issue and it affects everyone living on the planet. For that reason, all people should be a part of the um, global negotiation, especially those who are much affected by the climate crisis. Everyone can make a difference. Thank you so much, Mary and Ja. And in a way, just listening to you share 
the clauses that resonate with you the most, I almost feel like they go so well together and they're in conversation. As you were pointing out, Ja, it's incredibly important that when we implement climate policies, we are aware of issues around fairness and bringing everyone along in that energy transition. But almost, Mary, you're pointing out that the inclusion starts before the policies themselves are implemented in the process of making those policies within the decision making procedures themselves. And so thank you. I think those insights are incredibly well married together and I appreciate it. Now, moving on from some of the content in the Global Assembly, I want to transition us a little bit to speak on the theme of today's event, no peace, no climate action. So Mary, I want to invite you to share first. Throughout your experiences in the Global Assembly, reflecting on them, what does the theme of today's event, no peace, no climate action, mean to you? Um, I think a conflict and um, like peace and uh, climate change are connected. Um, conflict destroy. Con can you hear me? Hello. Thanks, Mary. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, conflict destroy countries and make people much more vulnerable. Conflicts leave a trail of destruction affecting water resources, agriculture, forests, biodiversity, and so on. This, make, uh, this makes the task of addressing climate change in conflict zone much more difficult uh, than in any other country. For addressing climate change, we need strong communities, strong com economies, and strong people. It's not an easy issue, and all people should be a part of the process of addressing climate change and ecological crisis. Um, however, nowadays, uh, we cannot ask people uh, who are fle uh, fleeing their homes, cutting down trees to get warm, uh, starving, uh, suffering from poverty and stuck uh, in unstable uh, conditions to tackle climate change and care about this issue. Raising awareness of, of climate change is a big challenge in conflict zones. The only way to get these people back into the, the global negotiation is peace. We need them with us. We can't fight without them. For that, we need peace for climate action. Furthermore, both climate change and the conflict directly affect human rights and environmental rights. Peace is the best way to protect these rights. So no peace, no climate action. Oh, Mary, thank you so much for sharing so insightfully. Ja, I'll ask you to answer the same question too. What does the theme of today's event, No Peace, No Climate Action, mean for you? Okay. 那么气候问题呢大家就会发现互相之间的气氛和志向是一致的。那这就非常有利于我们关于和平观念的普及。I believe there is a relationship between climate action and peace, and the responding to climate change can contribute to peace as climate change is a global issue faces every country every region and every person we need to take action in the same direction during the process i believe more people will realize that we share the planet we share the future the achieved consensus leads to cooperation and contributes to peace. Amazing. Thank you, Mary and Ja. And I just want to snowball a little bit. 
from the theme that is emerging from your interventions around this importance of peace as a concomitant of climate action. Now, I want to ask, starting with Ja, do you feel that, you know, reflecting on your experiences this past year, do you think the Global Assembly can bring about peace? And if so, why? Uh, how the首先我认为全球公民大会为普通民众提供了一个交流的平台 呃，在会议中呢，我和我同组的成员达成了空间的一致，我们互相之间很有默契。我认为呢，这也是一种和平。那这种和平来自于我们的共同性，这种共同性也让包括我在内每一个小组成员全程感觉到，这个会议十分的